Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain how to test the stability of state space models. In this particular lecture, we focus on the second order examples and in the next lecture, we will focus on the third order and higher order examples. The principle will be the same. Okay, so I'm giving you two state space models. Here's the first one and here's the second one. And I'm asking you the following question. Are these state space models stable, unstable, or asymptotically stable? Can you answer this question? Let us briefly revise the main concept of dynamical systems and what are the eigenvalues and what are the poles. Since you will see that the problem of investigating stability boils down to the problem of computing and analyzing the eigenvalues of the matrix A. This is our dynamical system. Here it is. It has an input and it has an output. The input is u and the output is y. And I will denote our system by s. We have several representations of such a dynamical systems, or better to say, several models. Arguably, the most popular representations are the state space model, which in the case of a linear systems looks like this. Here, X is the internal state of the system. A, B, C are the matrices, as well as this matrix D over here. And U and Y are the inputs and outputs. X dot is the first derivative of X. Another very popular representation in the case of single input and single output system is the so-called transfer function representation. The transfer function representation looks like this. It's a some kind of complex function of a Laplace complex variable s, w of s, and we can see that the output is a transfer function multiplying the input. Usually the transfer function are represented as a ratio of two polynomials. We have one polynomial in the numerator and one polynomial in the denominator. And over here, for clarity, I will just consider a second order system. For example, we will have a polynomial in the denominator that will look like this. And in the numerator, we will have the polynomial that will look like this. Okay, now, what are the poles of this system? The poles of these systems are actually the zeros of the polynomial in the denominator of this transfer function. That is, S values that satisfy this equation are called the poles. System is asymptotically stable if all the poles I will sketch it over here. Are strictly in the left half of the complex plane. Namely, if the horizontal axis is the real part of S and the imaginary in, in the vertical axis is the imaginary part of S, then the system is stable if all the poles for example, S1 and S2, are strictly in the left half of the complex plane. That is, they are here. If that's the case, the system is asymptotically stable. Now, having the transfer function, we can easily test the stability by just computing the zeros of the polynomial in the denominator and by just looking at the location of these zeros. Now, how about state space models? Well, there is a very elegant control engineering and control theory theorem that states that eigenvalues, eigenvalues of A are equal to the poles. And this is very important conclusion. Look again. The eigenvalues of the matrix A, 
this is very important to keep in mind, are actually the poles of the system. Again, third time, eigenvalues of A are actually poles of the system. So the problem of testing the stability of state space models boils down to the problem of computing and analyzing the eigenvalues of the matrix A. However, over here I have to add one small detail. However, this detail is very important for PhD students who are interested to learn advanced control theory. Namely, over here I implicitly assumed that both representations, that is, both state space and the transfer function form, are minimal. This means that in the case of transfer functions, there are no pole zero cancellations. And in the case of the state space model, the state space model is both observable and controllable. For complete beginners, forget about this. Forget about this. Just remember this. Eigenvalues of A are poles. However, for people who want to learn advanced control theory, always keep in mind that the requirement is that both representations are minimal. We learned that to test the stability of the state space model in the standard form, that looks like this, we actually need to compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So I will write it again for you to keep in mind this and to remember eigenvalues, let's write them down, eigenvalues of A determine stability, determine the stability. So this is something that you should always keep in mind. Okay, now the main question is how to determine the eigenvalues of A. Now, over here, since this is just an introductory tutorial, I will skip the derivation and I will state the main result. And here it is. The eigenvalues of A are actually zeros of this polynomial, determinant of lambda multiplying the identity matrix minus A is equal to zero. Over here, lambda are actually the eigenvalues. Then I is the identity matrix And over here, we have that that is simply matrix determinant. So I will write it down. That is matrix determinant. Okay. Now, how to compute this determinant and how to perform this whole procedure? Well, we need to perform several steps. However, before I explain that, I have will give you one additional detail. This polynomial in control theory is usually called the characteristic polynomial. So I will write it down. Characteristic, characteristic polynomial. Let me write it nicely. Okay, cool. So this is the characteristic polynomial. So let's summarize everything. Maybe fifth time. Eigenvalues of A determine the stability. Okay, good. But how to compute the eigenvalues? The eigenvalues are computed as zeros of the characteristic polynomial. The characteristic polynomial is formed by taking a determinant of this inner matrix. This inner matrix is equal to eigenvalue lambda multiplying the identity matrix minus the matrix A. And that's it. Simple as that. Here, before I continue, I need to mention a few important things. First of all, the main question is, does the matrix B and the control input U influence the stability? No, they don't influence the stability. In fact, when we want to investigate the stability of a system, we assume that this input u is equal to zero, and we are only less left with a homogeneous 
part of the system. That is, we are only left with x dot is equal to a x, and this is very important. However, in control theory, there is another concept, and this concept is called input-output stability. So this means that for finite inputs, you will get the finite outputs. However, this type of stability is not analyzed in this lecture. Okay, let's solve the first example. Here's our state space model. Here's the matrix A. Here's the matrix B. And here's the matrix C. The first step is to form the characteristic polynomial. That is, we need to form determinant of lambda multiplying identity matrix minus the matrix A. And we need to set this to zero. Okay. Over here, let's form lambda i minus a. Lambda is a complex variable, so we leave it as it is. The identity matrix is 1, 0, 0, 1. This is because this is a second order system, and over here we need to type minus a. a is 0, 1, minus 2, 1. Now, from here it follows that lambda multiplying identity is simply lambda, 0, 0, lambda. And over here we will have, let's add this minus sign inside, so we'll have plus, and inside we will have 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1. Then, we will obtain that lambda i minus a is actually, over here we will have lambda, then we will have minus 1, then we will have 2 over here, and over here we will have lambda minus 1. Okay, let's continue. Next, we need to find the determinant of this matrix over here, which is equal to lambda i minus a. So we'll have lambda minus 1, 2, lambda minus 1. And obviously the determinant of this matrix is lambda multiplying lambda minus 1, minus 2, and minus 1 becomes plus 2. And if we multiply everything together, we will have lambda squared minus lambda plus 2. And this is our characteristic polynomial. We set this polynomial to zero. Next, let's find the roots of our characteristic polynomial. Lambda 1, 2 is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. This is a standard formula for roots of a second-order polynomial. So let's apply this formula. Over here, we can see that a is 1, b is minus 1, and c is 2. So let's substitute these values. We have 1 plus minus square root of, what is b squared? Let me nicely write the square root b squared is 1. What do we have next? Minus 4, what is a? a is 1. And c, what is c? c is 2. And everything should be divided by 2a, since a is 1 divided by 2. And what do we have over here? We have 1 plus minus square root of, let's see, 1 minus 8 is minus 7 divided by 2. So, lambda 1, 2 becomes 1 plus minus, square root of minus 7 can be written as j, where j is the imaginary unit, multiplying square root of 7 divided by 2. Over here, we can observe that the eigenvalues are actually located over here. They're located at 
0 0.5, this is the real part, and the imaginary part is approximately 1.3 or something like that. So one eigenvalue is here and another eigenvalue is here. Since the eigenvalues are in the right half of the complex plane, that is, they are located over here, we conclude that our system is unstable. And this is a very important conclusion. Here is the second example that we want to solve. Here again, we want to investigate the stability of this state space model. Here is our matrix A, here is our matrix B, and here is our matrix C. As always, the first step is to form the characteristic polynomial. That is, we need to compute the determinant of lambda i minus a, and we need to set this polynomial to zero. First of all, let's compute this matrix, lambda i minus a. Again, lambda is a complex scalar, and since we have two by two by two by two system, the identity matrix is zero, it's actually one, zero, zero, one. And over here, A matrix is 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. And this is equal to, let's quickly multiply and arrange all the entries. We will have lambda, 0, 0 lambda. Over here, we will have minus. Now, I will add the minus inside, so I will put plus over here. And we will have inside 0, minus 1, 2, and 3. And that's it. Okay, so lambda i minus a becomes, over here we'll have lambda. Let me nicely write it. Here's lambda. Then we'll have minus 1, 2, and over here we will have lambda plus 3. Okay, so we need to compute the determinant of this matrix. Lambda minus 1, 2, and lambda plus 3. Obviously, the determinant is lambda multiplying lambda plus 3. And over here, we will have minus 2 multiplying minus 1, so this is 2. And this becomes lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2. And we need to set this to 0. Now, for students who are more advanced, they will not have problems to immediately see that this system is actually stable. This is because this polynomial has all the positive coefficients, and this means that all the roots of this polynomial are strictly in the left half of the complex plane. However, for students who are just beginners, they will have to compute the actual poles, or better to say, the zeros of this polynomial. So let's do that. We have that lambda, 1, 2, is minus b. b over here is minus 3. b is actually 3, so minus b is minus 3. Over here we'll have plus minus, square root of b squared, that's 9, minus 4ac, minus 4a is 1, and c is 2. And this should be divided by 2, since 2a is actually 2. And this becomes minus 3 plus minus square root of 9 minus 8 divided by 2, so this becomes minus 3 plus minus square root of 1, that's exactly 1, divided by 2. Consequently, lambda 1 is actually minus 3 minus 1 divided by 2, that becomes minus 2, and lambda 2 becomes minus 3 plus 1, becomes minus 2 divided by 2, 
and another lambda 2 is minus 1. Over here, we can see that the eigenvalues are located here and here. That is, they are located strictly in the left half of the complex plane. Consequently, the system is and consequently, the system is asymptotically stable. Okay, let's summarize this lecture. In this lecture, we learn how to test the stability of state space models. The idea over here is to create and form a characteristic polynomial given over here, then to compute the roots of the characteristic polynomial and on the basis of the location of the roots of the characteristic polynomial, we conclude about stability of the system. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.